Ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. My name is Daniel Umstead. I am the host of the RNG Radio Show, and I am here with you live on Facebook on my personal page. But if you are checking me out on YouTube, uh, there should be an icon right there in order to subscribe for more videos such as these because we are doing this daily, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. So uh, to add on to that, hey, listen, I, I, I know we usually wait till the end for motivation, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging um, for those that are listening. Um, move forward, you know, uh, stop thinking about as far as what your current situation is uh, with your friends, family, um, <clears throat> you know, if people gave up on you, so on and so forth, move forward. As long as you're moving forward, nothing ever, ever will stop you. So um, to get started here, um, first off, like I said, good morning to you all. Second thing is, um, for those that are just joining me, typically on every single show, we go over credit repair, real estate, resume writing, and some motivation to get you kickstarted throughout the day. So, <clears throat> a little bit backwards today, um, only just due to the fact, and excuse me one second. That was in there, in there, like, just was not coming out. So this is real stuff, guys. This is real stuff because it's live. So I, I didn't have my cameraman to cut and edit, what have you. But yes, credit repair. So first thing for a credit repair. Um, I run a credit repair program as far as helping individuals uh, get the credit uh, fixed on their accounts um, to, you know, purchase a home, purchase a car, um, get better credit cards. Um, you know, uh, better loans for, you know, to move forward in life. So uh, the credit repair program that I have, we typically work with attorneys, there's like 14 free services. And if you need more information about that, 267-702-3756. But if you're like, damn, I ain't got time for all that and I need my credit fixed, like today, um, and I want to go through your program, even though I know it's helped uh, thousands and possibly uh, close to millions. Um, I'm just not into it right now. My only focus is trying to work them out. That's fine. And this is why I want you to watch the RNG radio show. So starting off, um, I went on GoCleanCredit.com and an uh, article came up, how to improve credit score in 30 days. And I was like, what? You can do this in 30 days? And yes, you can. So, <clears throat> number one, pay down revolving balances to less than 30%. So, simple math, folks, you got a $1,000 uh, credit limit and your balance is not at 300 or under, start working on that. Um, I'll give you a little method that I'm actually currently using right now. I have two Capital One cards, um, and I'll be honest, both I was paying about 75, 77 a month on each of them. Well, uh, the one I, I still need to use as far as revolving and um, because the balances are near to where they need, shouldn't be at, I am working on getting them both down. But instead of me focusing on both of them at the same time, like, oh, yeah, I'll put money here, put money in there. Uh, my benefit that I find is that paying off one, focusing on one, while keeping the other one, minimum payments, um, adding a little bit extra will work to keep my balances down. So that's a tip as far as you to utilize. Um, now, credit score of 680, revolving balances are typically between 40% to 50% of the credit card limits. And then on credit score 780, revolving balances are 15% to 25% of their credit card limits. So work on getting it down to at least half, see where your credit stands at, and then um, you know pursue opportunities, whether it be whether you're looking for a realtor. I know one. I now want two six seven seven zero two three seven five six. Um, but um, the main thing is, is that you are working on getting your balances down. Number two, remove recent late payments. A single late payment can drop your credit score by sixty to a hundred points. Can you believe that? Can you believe one credit card payment, one loan install payment, can drop it by like a hundred points because you missed a day? That's insane. So. Uh, do me a favor, make sure <clears throat> that you are taking action in regards to uh, removing that. Now, uh, removing a late payment will take persistence. There are a couple of, you hear that persistence. So if you don't want to go through me, make sure you got some persistence in your body. Take a good glass of persistence, just drink that down and uh, move forward with it. Or you can just give me a call, 267-702-3756, and I can show you the way. 
But um, there are a couple of ways to request removal. The most common and effective way is to call the original creditor and ask for a goodwill adjustment. Imagine, imagine, I just want you to imagine, I want you to imagine throughout your day, what you got going on in your current life, whether you're working, you're not working, whether you're struggling to pay bills, whether you got all your bills lined up, and the only thing you got is um, this uh, creditor has on your account saying, hey, um, you know, this is an old payment. I already paid it off. Could we do a goodwill adjustment? You know what the for-profit company is going to say? Do you know what the for-profit company is going to respond back to you with? Huh? What you say? Can you speak up, boy? They going to turn straight grandpa or grandma on you. Boy, what you say? You had mentioned what now? You want to do what with the card? Hmm. Let me look into this. A hundred dollars? You want us to do a goodwill adjustment? Mm -mm, mm -mm, that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Matter of fact, let me put you over to the department that handles this and we'll get back to you, okay? That's what you're going to get from these creditors that are for profit because they're for profit. Meanwhile, the company that I work with, we work with a nonprofit agency that assists with this. These credit attorneys are doing this on a nonprofit basis. So, hello, hello, 267-702-3756. Okay, so um, <clears throat> now if they resist, you can even negotiate the removal of a late payment by agreeing to sign up for automatic payments. You got to go through all this stuff, all this stuff just to get your payments adjusted, just to get them to where they need to be at. Ladies and gentlemen, please call me, 267-702-3756. These are things that you could do on your own, but I'm trying to give you the difference between doing it on your own and just giving me a call and getting signed up to move forward to where you need to be at. Uh, third thing, remove a collection account. Same thing. Now, here's one thing that I will let you know. If you have an account that's currently in collections, like, I'm going to give you the process. I'm going to give you the process. Let's say Verizon. I only say Verizon because I was using it before. Let's say Verizon um, closed out your account, you know, or you closed them out, what have you. There's a balance of $500 on there. Now, Verizon, Verizon has stopped with that $500 balance. Verizon's like, nah, I, ain't, I ain't worried about no $500. Let's see if one of these collection agencies that we work with wants to go after the $500. What? So you telling me that you guys already wrote it off, but if we get it, we get to keep the cash? Yeah, knock yourself out. Yeah, and then um, it'll help boost their credit once they pay it off and such. So yeah, knock yourself out. So Verizon told ABC Collections Company, hey, here's 500 bucks. Um, we already wrote it off. We really don't care about it anymore because it was just 500 and we just did it as a text right off. But if you want to do it, knock yourself out. Here's their social, here's their information. We already told them in their agreement that um, collections would occur. So here you go, bam. So the ABC collections company is like, what? We about to get $500. So let's hound like crazy. Um, <clears throat> so let's hound like crazy in regards to getting on people uh, or getting on the person that owes that $500. So once they owe the $500, then it's like, all right, cool, I pay for it, right? Well, then there's still more adjustments to be made and everything like that. But before you pay the collection agency, keep that money in your pocket, or I should say, use that money towards joining the uh, <clears throat> credit repair program. Raise your credit limits. Call your credit companies and request a raise to your credit limits. Now, be wise about this, please. And do not be calling the credit card company if you know that your balance is uh, 2400 and your credit card limit is 2500 if your credit limit was maybe like 60, 55%, you're trying to get it down to the 50% by all means, then you could do that. Because um, let's go back to the example that we just gave. You got a balance of 2,500, right? <clears throat> or I should say your credit limit is 2,500, but yet you are working with a balance of 2,400. So getting it down to, let's say, I don't know, 1,800, at that point in time, you might want to put in a request to say, hey, is there any way that you guys could raise my credit limit? Once they raise it to, let's say, maybe 3000 then instead of you working on um, a balance of trying to get it from 1800 to 1250 you're now working on a balance of getting it from 1800 to 1500 and that'll be at the 50%. And that should put you in the ballpark in regards to looking for a home. So I say that again. Let me break this down. Credit card limit is 2500 You currently 
have a balance of twenty four hundred. So that means you just got a hundred dollars of credit floating out there that you can use to buy purchase products. But you're not doing that. You're being smart. You're being smart. You're now working on getting that twenty four hundred balance down to eighteen hundred. Now, once you got it down to eighteen hundred, excuse me, you're gonna call. Let's say Capital One. Call Capital One and say, hey. I want to get this down or I want to increase my credit limit to, let's say, 3000 The moment that they say yes or agree to it or say like, hey, you're going to get to 3000 by this time or term or whatever, um, boom. Now, instead of you working on doing half of 2500 which is 1250 now you're working on a half balance of 3000 getting down to 1500 So you are saving uh, the difference between 1800 and 1250 is $550. So instead of paying 550 to get that balance down, you're now only having to pay 300 So something to think about, folks, all right? Um, number five, charge small amounts to inactive credit cards. Um, if you have any credit cards that, you know, they're clo not so much closed out, please don't close out any credit cards. Don't close out any credit cards. Don't do it. Get away from that, please. It's not going to be beneficial. All right, I just want to make sure the message was loud and clear. But don't close out any of your credit cards. Please keep them open. You can pay down the balance if you want to pay down the balance to zero. But um, in order to get the um, your um, credit score back up <clears throat> within the 30 days, hey, get gas, you know. Um, what else is there? You know, if there's something quick that you need from the grocery store, that's not going to be a crazy amount. By all means, put that on the credit card, um, you know, and keep that balance there. You know, keep that small little balance there because you have to understand with these credit card companies and eventually with, you know, if you're trying to get a car, if you're trying to get a house, they need to know that you can manage no matter how much money that you have in your pocket uh, or if you do have a lot of money in your pocket that you're able to balance it. All right. Um, get credit. No credit equals bad credit. So some type of credit. There are two ways. Uh, there's a secured credit card, which we actually offer. If you're interested in that, 267-702-3756. There's also unsecured credit cards where you pretty much put the money on the credit card, but it still counts as far as building up your uh, credit score. So I believe we'll work on getting another wave of a stimulus check. When that does come in or when that does fly by, be sure to uh, utilize that, um, you know, not just so much as far as uh, putting things in the house. Now, if you need groceries, uh, please understand that your priorities as far as what you need to focus on and what you need to take care of should be completely separate um, from, you know, uh, as far as working on your wealth, working on building on your credit. So please don't uh, look in your fridge and be like, I ain't got no food. But Dan told me that I should sign up for the program and Dan told me to pay off my credit card. So I'm going to do that. I know something. I know you're grumbling. It's okay. But guess what? Who's going to make sure the credit cards get paid up? You are. Yes, you are. We're going to do that. <laughs> so, no, but the main thing is uh, get the credit um, that you deserve as far as building up that account <clears throat> and moving forward. Um, so, start improving your credit score today. So, if you need to improve your credit scores as soon as possible, you can benefit by listing the help of a credit repair company such as Robin Nathaniel Group. Uh, we work with FES, uh, Financial Education Services, in order to make this uh, beneficial for you. But please contact me, 267-702-3756. Now, on to the funness, on to the funness. Um, I just had it here. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Um, for my uh, resume writing, where is it at? I just had it. There we go. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody tried to pull a little whammy on Dan here. Business News Daily, things you should never do, never, never do during and after a job interview. So, um, oh, wow. uh, before you show up to your interview, prepare to answer questions about your personal background, your skills, and why you think you're a good fit for the position. Here's about the uh, background part. With your background, nobody cares where you grew up at. Nobody cares how old you are. Nobody cares how many kids you got. Keep, keep all that out. When we're, at, when we're asking, I should say yes, when we're asking recruiters, employers, um, is this going to be a good fit for you? You know, tell me about yourself. I'm only asking for what the information that you provided to me. Tell me about yourself. 
Where did you work at? How are your skills going to be beneficial uh, to showcase? Now, if you need help on that, this is free advice, folks, 267-702-3756. Now, on the day of the interview, and this happens, this happens, try to avoid these common interview mistakes, poor hygiene and personal experience personal appearance. Listen, if you got to go back to the grade school where it's like take a shower the night before, get your clothes out the night before, then do that. You got to understand these interviews typically last 15 to 20 minutes. So throughout your whole day, your whole day of 24 hours, 20 minutes, you need to make sure that it's perfected to at least a thousand percent. And the basic thing that you can do is brush your teeth. Now, don't brush your teeth the night before thinking you get away with it. Brush your teeth in the morning. But make sure all your clothes, uh, cleaned up shower and everything like that is done the night before. Um, showing up late. Being late to a job interview isn't just poor manners. It tells the recruiter that you don't care about the job. Like, ooh, that, that hurts. So I, I never looked at it in that way. I've always known that, you know, you shouldn't be late anyway. But to actually just you know, give a straight punch in the face. Hey, you don't care. You really don't care about this opportunity. And that's the uh, impression that you're given. My understanding was that, you know, being a recruiter oh, so long and everything like that, I always looked as like, oh, you got an emergency or um, not so much that you didn't care, but um, you weren't looking forward to this opportunity or something else came up. But to be just blatant about it, uh, straight no call, no show. Yeah, you definitely, definitely don't care. Now, if it's something that, you know, uh, that was outside. Oh, and there's the other thing too. For any emergencies, whether it be family, whether it be medical, uh, whether it be something as simple as a car accident, you know, unfortunately, if it does happen to you on your way to the interview uh, or if you get caught up with it, you shouldn't have any issues now because most interviews are being done video or through Skype. So just hop on Zoom or Skype uh, through YouTube uh, to learn more about that. But <clears throat> The uh, coming late to the interview is not going to benefit you in the uh, long run. Um, plan to arrive to your interview at least 10 or 15 minutes early. I'd say 30. Honestly, 30 minutes. Here's the thing. Get there 30 minutes early, but don't go in until 10 or 15 minutes uh, before the start of your interview. Um, because you want to give way for traffic. You want to give way for whether there's a security sign and you want to give way for, let's say that you're uh, going to an interview at a corporate building and, um, you know, uh, people that do work there are still working there. So if you get there at, let's say, uh, 11 o'clock, most likely everybody's already there. Or for those that are doing a second shift, they're starting to get there as well. So by the time you find a parking space, you might be all the way in the back. I'm coming. Give me one second. All right. So make sure that um, you, you allow 30 minutes as far as getting there and then the 10 to 15 minutes as far as walking through the door. Uh, this should go without saying, but being rude to the receptionist or support staff will get you a big fat F. So make sure the moment that you step on those campus grounds and um, th there have been, you know, crazy and kooky stories that, you know, prior to an interview, somebody may have gotten some water or a coffee to keep them alert and may have run into their manager. But pretty much that day, I need you to act like you were a good Samaritan and you've always been a good Samaritan by greeting everybody, and saying hello to everybody, because you never know that person that you met at the uh, Wawa 7-Eleven or even out on the street, prior to you going into the interview, might be that manager or support staff that you come across uh, going into the building. So you always, always want to make sure that you got a smile on your face. Uh, being too comfortable with the interviewer. Now, you and the hiring manager might have, oh, I'll give you a prime example, prime example. I'm just going to go straight into the example. Uh, I was uh, doing an interview, this was way back when, at Community College of Philadelphia. Now, I did my research. Of course, I researched the school. This was for like a student services assistant director role. Like, I was going to love this role. I had just recently got my master's. I was already working a nonprofit. So I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be a win-win. And the nonprofit that I was working with already had a partnership with the community, uh, community college of Philadelphia. So I'm like, I'm in like Flint. This, this is going to be great. It's going to be a piece of cake. So I started researching the people in the department. Come to find out, one of them uh, was my frat brother. We were in the same fraternity. So I'm like, let me go in here and show my thing. 
It's your own mild thing. So interview went great. Interview went splendid. Interview was amazing. With any fraternity, with any group, with any organization, not all members think the same and not all members are on the same page. So when I went in there for the interview and I did spectacular and he's like, hey, um, thank you so much. We should be hearing from you shortly. Man, did I put my hand out, not so much for a hearty handshake, but came to do a whole grip like, yeah, appreciate you, Fred. Uh. And he's like, what are you doing? What are you? Oh, oh, you're one of those fraternity members. Mm. Okay, uh, we'll be in touch. Bruh, what? Here, I'm thinking, I'm like, are you serious? And of course, me being so young, like I said, this was like 10 years ago, so in my 20s, so I wasn't thinking properly. But to myself at the point in time, I'm like, bro, bro, I'm frat. But it goes back to the equal opportunity. You know, just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you automatically get in through the door. Just because you worked at a certain company doesn't automatically get you in through the front door. Just because you're a certain race, just because you're a certain in a certain fraternity doesn't automatically get you through the front door. You yourself, your personal experience, your personal skills get you in through the front door. I had my master's at that time. I had uh, close to five years of experience working in nonprofit. I had college preparation uh, workshops that I've done day and night uh, for, college, for uh, <clears throat> potential college students, high school students, and even talking to teachers about it. I've led auditoriums um, in many different high schools all those things but what did i want to do put, try to put an icing on cake and be like ah what's up bro? Ah, what's going on and it didn't give me the job so you take it as a life experience and then you share that experience with folks and letting people know so don't get too comfortable with the interview hey you know now once y'all start working hey do do what you want ah, hey, hey, hey boy you know you can do all that but Calm it down during your interview. You gotta understand that you are trying to impress yourself uh, for the interview. All right. Um, poor body language. So sit it down. Ah, so tell me again what this job is. How much? 20 shucks. I could do that. I could do that. So make sure you got your back straight. Uh, for those that are wearing a suit jacket, make sure that um your button is undone but when you stand up that the only button that you should be buttoning is the uh, top button uh ladies and gentlemen so um but yeah hiring managers pay attention to your verbal answers but they also look at how you deliver of them so when somebody asks you hey so what did you like about at and <clears throat> man i mean when i was working it was all right or if you are getting a solid straight answer you know, you don't want to be too monotone either. At at and I was a customer service rep assisting with billing, account maintenance, and helping others over the phone. I handled about 100 to 125 calls on a daily basis. And then I was rewarded for my 97.6 success rate in closing our clients. Anything further? So please, please take off the creepy robot, uh, but be yourself. Be calm, be cool, be collective, but don't be too overconfident during your interview, but also don't be too monotone as well. Have a conversation. Um, I always say with the practice, if you got kids uh, or if you got a niece and nephew, or if you can just borrow a kid, I'm kidding, don't borrow a kid, but uh, a kid that is within your family or circle of friends, uh, say like, hey, can I borrow your kid for five minutes? Practice with them in regards to interviewing because my whole thing is is that you, if you can engage the attention of a 5, 10 year old or even 12 year old for an interview, you're definitely going to gain the attention of the hiring manager. And so um, last but not least, there's like a whole bunch of stuff on here. Last but not least, please feel free to check out the article I said, Business News Daily. And the title of the article is Things You Should Never Do During and After an Interview. So the last one that I wanted to go over here is uh, checking social media. Make sure that your social media is intact or just switch that privacy to private, being completely private. And then have your friends uh, go on it or family members go on and check to see like, hey, um, can you see if there's anything on my profile that shouldn't be there or um, really, really I should be taken off? So, excuse me, uh, go forward with that. Now, on to my real estate. Hey, real estate, 
my realtors, my realtors, my fellow realtors getting this money. Now, if you haven't already known, uh, Pennsylvania uh, did reopen to a limited capacity as far as for, um, you know, of allowing us to get back out there, show homes. Actually, a friend of mine um, who was with uh, Keller Williams, great guy, uh, Khalid, he actually, within a week, um, not even within a week, but with actually within a day, he was able to get somebody in the contract. So it is, it is possible, folks, uh, to get back out there. Now, as far as getting back out there, what can you do to, um, you know, pretty much uh, make yourself known, make yourself uh, stand out? There was this, um, I, I was always, not so much freaked out about it, but I was always like curious and trying to figure out how do, because uh, Connor Steinbrook, when he does send out his, uh, him and uh, Ian Flanagan, they're both with EXP, but when they send me the emails about the mastermind calls and how to get out there and such, they're always sending a video within the body of the email. And I'm like, how can you send a video within the body of the email? And I was always trying to figure it out. Uh, I just really never took the time to actually sit down and actually look through it, but come to find out um, the thing is called bomb bomb. Dot com. Now, with BombBomb.com is the fastest way to record and send video messages, keeping you face-to-face -face with the people who matter most. So, and typically what it does is that it creates an animated preview. We automatically generate a three-second animation of your video so your customers see your face right away. So, the moment that they open up an email, um, boom, that's the first thing that they're looking at. Screen recording. You can record yourself, your screen, or both to review documents, give presentations, or educate your prospects and clients. That's pretty much kind of like Zoom. So, uh, you know, you could do a video of yourself and make sure it's in the body of the email. In addition, realtors, don't feel that you need to use this just for your clients, your prospective uh, customers. Use this for everybody. You got somebody that just joined the team? Hey, send them a welcome message email. Welcome to the team, Daniel. And then, you know, put in the video. That's one thing that I loved about EXP. And it's not required, but, um, <clears throat> and I don't know if they're just doing it as a strategy, but the person who brought me in had mentioned, hey, listen, um, what is it? The, uh, you know, welcome to the team and, and making the video personable um, just for me. So, you know, make sure that you're doing that as far as when you're bringing on team members uh, or when you're trying to build your own team that, hey, um, I'm, I'm doing everything that I can. Uh, in addition, oh wait, get my thoughts maxed up here. Sorry, jumping ahead. The screen recording, utilize that for your customers, clients, and uh, brand new agents and current agents on the team. Follow up, get live notifications of who watched your video and when so you can reach back out even see how long people watch your video. So this is great as well. You know, YouTube does have this uh, capability as well, but to actually have it directly like sent to you, A, uh, the video that you sent, this two minute one, um, they only watched the first 10 seconds of it. Did you want to follow up with them? Uh, more flexibility. We host show live recorders and upload videos, um, unlimited videos, unlimited <laughs> unlimited meth, whoa. No, unlimited videos, unlimited length, and files up to 2 GB in size. So that's pretty huge considering that um, my typically 40-minute uh, videos that I do with you guys um, on a daily call and everything like that are usually like 125. So just to give you some range, 2 gigs equals out to about um, 100, or I should say 200, no, 2,000, 2,000 uh, megabytes. So for the fact that I do 120 with you guys, simple math here, that's, um, you're looking at probably like about 15 videos. So 15 calls of 15, or 15 videos of 40 minutes a piece will pretty much reach up to the uh, two gigabytes. So that is a lot, especially if you're doing 40 minute videos and you can always take them down and such. Um, and every device, inbox, mobile, and web, record from any device and have people play it back on any device. So check it out, bombbomb.com. That is B-O-M-B, -B, like bomb. And another B-O-M-B, -B, bomb.com. So be sure to check that out uh, with that and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in order to move forward. So what are we going over today? Credit repair. Um, as far as fixing your credit in 30 days, we talked about for my realtors, as far as how you can showcase yourself and for the resume day writing, what to do before and after an interview. The last thing I wanted to leave you with um, after I take this sip of water. 
is the uh, motivation. Now, what you heard earlier today, uh, for those that were listening uh, prior to the recording of this call, was uh, I typically will put on like a YouTube video as far as getting myself prepared. In addition, uh, getting you folks uh, prepared as far as listening and such. So with the motivation that I wanted to discuss with you all today is that stop thinking of what others are thinking. Nine times out of 10, they really don't care nine times out of 10, or they're doing it just so they can grab your attention or get you engaged or see what you're about or see what you're really doing. As long as you're staying on the right path and as long as you're doing whatever it takes, you will get there. Stop thinking that, oh, if I just do one push-up today, that I should be good to go. Or if I do five push-ups by the end of this week, that I should be good to go. No, it has to be something that's planned. It has to be something that is consistent and it has to be something that allows you to move forward. But the moment that you allow other people into your sphere, the moment that you allow other people who are negative, ultimately. Now, if people are positive and they're rooting you on, um, if people are saying like, yo, Dan, yo, keep going, bro. Keep going. You're going to do things. You're going to do things, man. Yo, remember who told you from the beginning? Remember who told you from the beginning? Ah, ah, that was me. That was me. Yeah, it was me. It was me. It was me. Yep, you know it was me. Um, so if you have people like that, by all means, keep them in. But also realize the people who, uh, you know, somebody as close as your mother or father, as far as coming to your life and saying like, eh, are you sure this is a good idea? Or are you sure this is going to get to where you need to be at? Or ultimately, just stepping back completely when you do go then for assistance. Utilize the people that are in your life as far as a stepping stone. So count them as part of your 100, you know, uh, because the rule in sales is that 1% of the 100 people that you contact guarantees a sale. How would you like that? You know, that simple formula, you're telling me if I call 100 homes today, Dan, that one of them is gonna get back to me in regards to a sale? Yes, that is the guarantee. Now, I know what you're thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna just call 100 people. Dan, I called 100 people and nobody got back to me. Well, what did you offer them? Well, I just want to see if they want to sell the house. Were they even in a position looking to sell their house? No, you need, when you're calling 100 people, don't be calling 100 random people. Like if, uh, like the people who go around and pretty much knock on doors and saying like, hey, um, I'm a brand new realtor in the area. Uh, here's my car. Would you like to do a listing? Doing that type of 100 isn't going to be effective as you actually pulling the list of absentee owners and seeing if those individuals are looking to sell their house. Excuse me. Um, and so realize which avenue, which pathway that you're going, that you're going with it, um, in order to get to there. But take your friends, take your family out. That's providing any type of negative backlash on you that's preventing you from moving forward. Um, and with that as well, um, I was talking to uh, my frat brother slash uh, real brother, um, <clears throat> in addition to as far as letting him know what I got going on, you know, because uh, I was listening to a sales training call yesterday in regards to FES. And, you know, they were talking about testimonials, which was great. They were talking about building your team. And I'm like, and I was getting frustrated. I'm like, all right, but what steps do I need to do now? What, what, what things can I be doing now? And he, he was um, telling me, he's like, Dan, you got all the tools in the world. What are you talking about? You're a recruiter. You know how to recruit. Uh, you got LinkedIn. Utilize that. You just told me that you just signed up for LinkedIn Premium. So people like that in your life, I, I wish I had 100 of him. I'd, I'd probably be rich by the end of this week, if not sooner than that. Um, but you have to look at the tools and resources that you have around you and make that effective. When you go to somebody and ask for their assistance or ask for their advice or ask for their help, don't feel that it should be an automatic yes. Don't feel that it should be an automatic handout. Don't feel that they should be automatically providing you the tools that you need to get ahead. All you're doing or should be doing is inquire with folks when you do talk about it, you know, hey, especially with the credit repair, when I uh, discussed that, it is just a simple conversation. Hey, do you or know anybody that could benefit uh, from getting their uh, credit fixed? Um, no, think about it. That's it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, and that is it. But I need to do that a hundred times over in order to get that what? That one. So uh, continue to be prosperous, continue to be great, and please take that negativity and pull that out. Now, if you need more for the information, further, further, 
further. If you need, uh, tú necesitas más información sobre uh, lo, llámame, 267-702-3756. I was saying if you need more information, please call me, 267-702-3756. And for those that speak Spanish, let me know how I'm doing. I'm trying to get to a point because I was like, all right, I'm doing Duolingo. I'm listening to movies uh, about, you know, that, that are pretty much in the Spanish subtitles and Spanish audio. What else could I be doing? Oh, speaking it. Because, you know, when we ask candidates who are bilingual, can you read, write, and speak Spanish? And, you know, for the most part, they say, yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, I have some that just say, oh, I can read it really good and I can tell you what it's about. Or I know a few things in regards to writing, but nobody has all three. So in order to be the champion, need the Trinity, all three. All three. If you are to pass through the gates, you are going to need all three in order to move forward in your life and get to where you need to be at. Utilize the resources that you have. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. And last but not least, you know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say. Stay blessed, my fellow millionaires. Have a great one.